Good day everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be doing a little comic book history on the character of Sunspot and of Warlock. Yes, these two champions have recently been put into the game and I want to give you a little bit more history to them because yes, Kabam do cover some elements of it but I want to go a little bit further or maybe give you some quick facts and bullet point things that make you understand these two characters, these two champions, these two mutants or sort of technical mutants and give you a little bit more understanding. Let's do it. So let's begin with Warlock. What information can I give you? Well, first and foremost, he is part of an alien race called the Technarchy. Uh, and it's a bit of a tongue twist to kind of say it that way because it's like technical technarchy. It's it's kind of a bit odd, but at the same time, there's a rough translation into Bulgarian that gives tech church, which again doesn't really kind of classify that as a race, but still the point remains that it's a race of mechanical organisms that survive by infecting living creatures with the techno-organic transmode virus, similar to obviously the techno-organic virus that we've come to association with things like apocalypse and as well things associated with cable. A lot of the creatures mainly survive by absorbing energy, which they call as the life glow. The Technarchy are very cold, they're very numb when it comes to compassion and that's what separates the race from what is deemed to be a mutation in Warlock in that he has compassion against what the race normally does which is basically to cause death and disruption. The point that sets Warlock apart from the rest is that when he grows his compassion it comes at the worst time. He's got to as a part of a rite of passage kill his father because they have to either kill their parents or it's a case that their parents kill them. That is the deal, that is the rite of passage. Also the other kind of weird thing is that he's referred to as Syadam. Yes, that's the other name for Magus. Magus is the ruler and that is the father of the alien race. Warlock had no option but to escape. At the end of the day, he didn't believe in his abilities and the fact that Magus is incredibly more powerful than him, he escaped to Earth, actually crashing through Asteroid M, which, um, yeah, it turns out that is the HQ of Magneto, not the greatest places to, uh, to crash through, and lands very close to the Xavier Mansion, which then starts setting things up between the new mutants and himself, and also clashing very early on. And at this time, the new mutants and the X-Men were both running different kind of groups, but they were all operating out of the Xavier Mansion. In the very early stages of the relationship between the new mutants and Warlock, it was kind of discovered and it was self-evident that Warlock acted very much like a child and obviously that can be seen with the juvenile aspect of how to exist on his home planet. They would have had to kill his parents. Now, when it comes to what happened on Earth and the future kind of iteration into the New Mutants, it's all about merging. And the fact is he really befriended Doug Ramsey, the later Cypher that was part of the New Mutants. Now on the topic of Cypher, it was discovered at a later date that he was able to merge with Warlock and that kind of cool dynamic of those both, those two characters merging together actually led to a different series of comic books called Doug Lock and there is a very sad ending to this. And that Doug Ramsey took a bullet for magic and uh, obviously the rest they say is history even though there's kind of this thing about merging together and they also after the point of Doug's death then kind of visited relatives. It's just a case that it's sad that Warlock's first friend or best friend died very early on. But there's this kind of cool Doug Lock series that just kind of makes this last a bit longer, which is nice. Let's now turn our attention to Sunspot. Now, we've got a really weird and odd situation in that. Well, why is he in a business suit? Why is he all about this business? Well, it's all about the fact that he's probably inherited a lot of money from his father, who's Brazilian millionaire Emmanuel de Costa. Even though that his mum was an established archaeologist called Nina, she may have sold some fantastic things that may have fed a lot of money somewhere. But look, let's face it, the fact is the boy's got money. Yes, where did the powers come from? It's a mutation, of course. He was on the soccer field. It was the case that he got into a little bit of an argument and then his powers manifested. You know, get him angry and the powers manifest. That old chestnut, well, that's how it happened. As he grew up, it was very self-evident he needed to learn more about his powers. And the best place to do that is Xavier's School for the Gifted Youngsters, which he indeed enrolled into. 
Now he was taught how to control them properly. They got to experiment in the danger room. And obviously the best part about it is he joined the new mutants. But over the years, he's done some very odd things. In some cases, very shady things. He's got himself involved with the Hellfire Club. He then rejoined the new mutants. He then joined X-Force for a time, went back to Hellfire Club. And yeah, it's it just very crazy and all over the place. Now it comes to the shady doing side of things with Sunspot. Now, for a lot of you in-game, you're kind of wondering, okay, well, Sunspot doesn't normally have this kind of outfit. He's kind of this business version. And what is the deal with this? Well, this is the kind of supreme leader of AIM thing. If you're familiar with AIM, then you'll know that it's advanced idea mechanics. And what they've done over the past is they have done some very bad things. The way that they've gone about... Well, trying to succeed and putting their own stamp it's kind of got this shield aspect to it but maybe mainly like shield for a front and it's like they want to do things but they don't care who they step over in order to reach success and i think that's what sunspot really buys into with when well buying into aim because theoretically what he does he buys aim sunspot rebrands the aim or aim as avengers idea mechanics now again Positive things were meant to happen from this, but there's again shady doings when it comes to the release or the development of the disease called Mpox. Now, it's all about trying to take away powers of those that have mutations, something that is involved with the Terrigan Mist or Terrigan Cloud. The fact is, it is very much, again, shady doings and something that kind of paints him in a more of a negative light. But AIM wasn't really the main type of business, there was other stuff. De Costa International was something founded by Emmanuel De Costa, his father who unfortunately died based on the fact that his uh, secretary or assistant, Eve, liked to deliver coffee that was poisoned, which uh, unfortunately killed him. When the information comes up about Emmanuel De Costa, it is all about being an industrialist. So it could be a loads of different industries that he is indeed into, and it could be like a, a big grouping of different businesses all together. Anyway, out of the two characters, Sunspot has actually gone to the big screen. We've seen Sunspot in Days of Future Past, a character that looks so damn cool. I'm really proud that we eventually got to see something like this. X-Men Days of Future Past is going to be one of my favourite films that's been put out on Fox and I really hope that there's a massive reboot that now that it's back with Marvel, um, Marvel Entertainment and Marvel Studios, we could actually see something good. I would even rate a Disney Plus TV show if it was a case that they actually did it on point and we didn't have to wait so long for something that was actually decent because a lot of the films that have X-Men related haven't really delivered for me. But there is good news and we should be seeing a version in the New Mutants but will we see the full execution of the powers? Probably not. For a massive mutant fan like me, having two characters associated with the New Mutants is absolutely amazing and I'm really kind of digging this August monthly event. I'm not a massive fan of the Sinister Labs, but apart from that, I, I take it or leave it. The fact is, we've got two awesome new characters. Hopefully this has been interesting for those that wanted to find out a little bit more about these two new entries. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more Marvel Contest of Champions, and as well, comic book related content. And as always, I should see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.